FNAF is wild right now. I've been seeing FNAF all over my YouTube recommendation feed from Theft King temper tantrums over King Carter rickrolling him to oh yeah talking about Five Nights at Sonic's, a fan game in a way I never thought someone would do, and just so much more. I don't even know where to begin. Well, let's start off with the whole Scott came back ordeal. To just summarize it in one sentence, he said he was done making FNAF games and was handing over the rights to someone he trusts can't continue the franchise for it. But as of recent, it seems like he's back to work on the franchise again in some way, shape, or form. Then again, I've only seen like one source about this, so this can quickly get out in like a month. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Now I want to talk about this fan verse initiative. I keep hearing about it and it's all its controversies. So let's start with the game that came out first, One Night at Flumpty's 3. So Jonah Chrome was one of the first of the fanverse devs who finished his game, but unfortunately he ended up in some controversy that I'd rather not talk about since when I first heard about it, I was rather upset about it. And now I'll never have a birthday boy bland plushie because of it. But let's move on to something recent. Pop Goes Arcade came out recently. Despite having never played any of the Pop Goes games, I've actually considered it because, well, it's got the Scott seal of approval and I've seen plenty of reviews on the game being positive, so it must be a good game. Now. FNAF Plus, huh? What a wild story that is. not made the FNAF 2 open source game and it became really popular with a lot of FNAF YouTubers. But uh, Scott took it down for being too similar to his games, but after Fiznam gave his criticisms to Scott's original games, Scott invited him into the fanverse and gave him permission to make like FNAF reimagined also called FNAF Plus. Now here's my favorite part about the whole Fiznam story. My man played Security Breach, hated it, and now uses that as his motivation to work on the damn game. His mindset is, my game cannot be as bad as the dumpster fire known as Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. I don't know about you guys, but seeing that makes me believe Fiznam is already making one of the greatest FNAF fan games that will ever graze the FNAF community. I can't wait for that game to come out. Now what's next on the list? Ah yes. Emil Mako in Five Nights at Candies. Actually, what is there to say about Five Nights at Candies? I haven't seen any updates about it. All I know is that a fourth game is in the works, and while that's pretty exciting, I'm not really all too hyped about it. For all I could know, it could be a mix of FNAF 4 and Sister Location because that's how I feel the Candy series has been like these past few games. Five Nights at Candies was a mix of FNAF 1 and 2, Candies 2 was a mix of 2 and 3, and Candies 3 was full on FNAF 4, but better, but more exploitable. So if the pattern were to repeat itself, we're about to get a mix of FNAF 4 and Sister Location, or just full on Sister Location, which was a game I very much disliked. So I'm hoping Emil Mako just gives us a masterpiece that's worth its price. Now onto what I'm most excited for in the fanverse, Nixon and the joy of creation. Now I've thoroughly followed the updates Nixon has gotten, and I gotta say my favorite update was the one where he was finally no longer contractually obligated to develop Dark Deception. I, I think that's what happened, right? Anyways. Now that he can finally work on the joy creation, I cannot wait to see how the Ignited Collection will come out and how much more terrifying and fun it'll be. The joy creation brings a unique fear to me that I've never felt in any other horror game. Seeing the new models and what's coming to the Ignited Collection, I just can't wait to finally be able to give Nixon my money for his game. Weird thing to say, but I ain't afraid to admit it. Once again, I'll say it, joy creation is the game I'm most excited for and can't wait for it to come out. Well, I believe I've talked quite enough about the fanverse, let's move on to something else. Now, as of writing this video, my YouTube feed has always contained one to three videos about how FNAF is in some controversies, whether it being how Security Breach was FNAF's biggest flops, to Theft King being a man-child while fighting with Kane Carter, and how the fanverse is quote-unquote dead. The last one will be fun to tackle. Well, let's see, Security Breach. I absolutely hate this game and refuse to believe that has a very positive review on Steam, when the game is just so boring. I'm with Fiznum about the game. Everything he said about it, I agree. Look at how they massacred my boy. I can see why there's a lot of videos on the fact that Security Breach was a bad game. Hell, I tried replaying it the other day and I got so bored of the game, I I reached the daycare and just quit because I was just so bored. But hey, the game made banks, so it did its job. Is it fair to say the game flopped? Well, judging by Steam reviews, no. But overall, it's left a sour taste in the FNAF community. And I think it's safe to say the community is 50-50 split on the game. Now onto a topic I've been wanting to talk about for no particular reason. I just really want to talk about it. Theft King, oh how you've fallen, King. I don't think you deserve that crown, my guy. But nonetheless, I'll give you a brief summary on how I found this guy. I was disappointed with Security Breach and somehow my YouTube feed knew this and showed me this video. Why FNAF used to be scarier. Everything is said in that video, the way it was presented, how it was written, I thoroughly enjoyed it and agreed with what he said about F how FNAF used to be scarier. I watched a few more of his videos and he earned my subscription. Now fast forward 6 months later 
and he made a video called The End of the Fanverse Initiative, which got the attention of Kane Carter, and I gotta say, I respect the way Kane Carter responded to all of the stuff that was being said about the initiative. As he said before, he's the spokesperson of the initiative, so if you wanted info, you go to him. And then Sheep Rampage made the video, The Problem with the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative. While once again, Kane Carter took to Twitter and responded to the video defending the initiative with points about how the Fanverse has been a success, with Pop Goes Arcade having a 98% rating on Steam, Funko Pops and U2s of the characters are being made this year, Nixon finally being allowed to work on his game again, and Fizz now giving us so many f updates on FNAF Plus. Then Theft King just decided to misunderstand the message, thinking that Kane Carter was feeling directly attacked from the video and tried to tell him to stop stop taking everything personally. Theft King had a 5 hour live stream where most of it was just him ranting about Kane Carter and how he won't answer his DMs and how it's stressing him out and Fizznam just being given the opportunity cause Scott felt bad for him? Theft King really went downhill from here. As my friend Aiden said, fame got to his head and he forgot how to act. And I don't think he's far off. Anyways, Kane made a whole response video to Theft King which showed us a lot about Theft King and what type of person he is. I don't want to go too much into detail cause there's still so much I want to talk about but We'll just say that Theft King has been kicked out of the community. How can this guy think it's okay to act like this at 31 years old? Now every FNAF channel is saying fan versus dead, Scott will never do this again, but honestly, I don't think it did. Like King Cutter said, Popko's got a 98% rating on Steam, we got merch about these games coming out later this year, Nixon can work on the joy of creation, and Fiznom has been giving us constant FNAF news updates. How the hell can you say the fan versus dead? I just don't get it. Just because there's been a few controversies doesn't mean it's dead. Controversy didn't stop these guys from developing the games, so how can we say it's dead? I don't understand it, I don't get it, and I don't want to know what these guys are thinking. Now, I want to dedicate this segment to someone I've been watching for a while. Ah uh, yeah, is another FNAF YouTuber who has been making FNAF fan game reviews for a while now. He started with Candies, then a reimagined FNAF 6, and now my favorite video of his, Five Nights at Sonic's. I can't believe this guy sat through all five games. I've played them all, and I wish I could just see his raw reactions to each game. Like how the power is in the first game. Very unfair. I've done it. It's hard. Or how unfair slash unoptimized Five Nights at Sonic 2 is. He said in videos before that he hates FNAF 3. So, I was so curious on how his playthrough was for Five Nights at Sonic 3. Seeing as they're kind of similar, but sort of different. One thing I am most curious about was his playthrough through FNAF 4 because he said that FNAF 4 is one of his favorite FNAF games. FNAF 4 being kind of similar to Five Nights at Freddy's 4, I wonder. I know he said in his video that he didn't get through the game, but still, I, I wonder what his like initial reactions was about the game. And I wonder, he said this in his video, but how did he initially like react to how slow Five Nights at Sonic's origin felt. I know he talks about his experience about the games, but I want to see the raw footage of those playthroughs. Nonetheless, the fact that he made a whole video on the Five Nights at Sonic series baffles me because it's something I never thought I'd see someone go through. Massive respect for uh, yeah, and he's earned my subscription since he started his channel with his YouTube shorts. Uh, yeah, if you find this video, I'd love to collab on a fan game review with you. Hit me up on Discord or leave me a comment letting me know if you'd like to do a video together. Other than that guys, go subscribe to uh, yeah, he makes awesome videos and he deserves it. Well, what'd I say? FNAF is wild right now. I wonder how much longer until all the heat dies down. Only time will tell. I've been wanting to make this video for a while, but it was hard because of the other big project videos I've been working on. But I'm glad I was able to make this video before the heat died down. What do you guys think? Is the FNAF scene just crazy or did I over exaggerate a bit? Honestly, I just saw the whole FNAF scene and thought, this is wild. I just got to work on this video. Alright, well, that's all I've got to say and my perspective on everything going on. Thank you guys for watching. It means a lot to me if you guys could subscribe. I don't have a sub goal right now, but all I know is that YouTube likes channels that pull subscribers. Also, if you could leave a like, that'd mean a lot as well. Once again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.